Hi. Um, since the announcement that there will be an Animorphs movie, I've, uh, I've wanted to do more videos about Animorphs, uh, and that's also because they tend to get more views than uh, videos that aren't about Animorphs. Um, so, win-win. Um, so I'm, I've been trying to come up with more ideas, uh, and one idea that I had was, since I reread all the books and did uh, writing reactions to the books, uh, I thought, well, I should re-watch all the episodes, having recently, fairly recently read the books. It's actually about a year and a half since I uh, finished the series, um, but still fairly recently. Um, and uh, so I thought I should watch the show, um, having recently reread the books and in, an in anticipation of the uh, movie. Um, and I was going to watch all 26 episodes and then do a video, but that is a waste of, uh, of episodes. And so what I decided to do instead is uh, do them however many at a time, probably four or five at a time. Um, in this particular case, it, it uh, works out evenly to four uh, conveniently. It's a good, good stopping point. But if I hit, a, if I hit uh, an episode four that's part one of two, I, you know, do the part two before re uh, making a video about that grouping of episodes, or maybe I'd stop at three. Um, so who knows? But uh, the point is, I'm going to squeeze as much as I can out of re-watching episodes of Animorphs. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, depending on how this works, uh, maybe I do it with space cases, um, which I really love, and I already did do a big long blog post about space cases, but I didn't talk about it on YouTube. Um, and then uh, if that works out too, maybe I will uh, do videos um, in this time of binging things about uh, shows that people actually watch. Um, but uh, for now, Animorphs episodes uh, 1 through 4, which ultimately amount to uh, the story in this book, the first Animorphs book, The Invasion. And... Uh, it's it's like the first the first episode features the actual inv well it doesn't feature the actual invasion we know we find out in the books it's been going on for a long time the actual invasion but the the, the kids witness it uh, in the first book and in the first episode the spaceships come down we see the aliens for the first time and uh, you know it's and their adventure starts they get the power to morph and their adventure starts and I'll start. I will start uh, with a bit about those aliens, because obviously, uh, if you've seen this show, it did not have the highest budget, and I think that, and I, I don't know for sure, but I'm, I, it seems like most of the budget for the show went toward making the morphing look decent, and it looks decent. It will probably look a lot better in the movies, and it looks people turning into other things. Like, for instance, um, a couple years after the Animorphs movie uh, shows stopped airing, the first Harry Potter movie came out. And there is a very quick shot of a cat turning into Dame Maggie Smith. And that looks really cool. And that is probably... And, and the morphing in the upcoming Animorphs movie will probably look better even than that. Um, because it will be... 20 years later, or more than 20 years later. Um, but the morphing looked decent, and it, it was exciting to see. Um, I think the first morph is, well, there's, there's the shadow of Visser 3, but the first morph is uh, Jake turning into his dog, and like the elongating of his, his face, um, the, the way that his hand kind of crumples into a paw. Um, it's, it's, it's okay. For what it was for for uh, kids television in the late '90s, it's okay. The aliens are, admittedly, it was cool to see visualizations of the aliens from the book, but it was also clearer that the money went toward the morphing, and then they made some puppets. Um, 
it's it's hard to tell sometimes with the Andalites, but I think that they were big plastic heads on, I don't know if they were the actors or, or stuff, because the Andalites, you don't have to have their mouths moving. Um, but the eyes were huge, so you didn't have to have human eyes, even though I think the Andalite eyes probably would have looked uh, fine as human eyes, uh, that size. But the eyes were huge. Um, and so I think they're just big plastic masks on people wearing blue fuzzy sweaters, at least those for the close-ups. Um, one, uh, one time when they showed Andalites, I think it was Visser 3 coming down from the ship, it was clearly a horse, uh, horse legs painted blue, uh, which was funny because they also, that's part of the Animorphs' plan to fool the Yerks, in a, in the next episode, they paint, they, they have Cassie turn into a horse, they paint her legs blue. That was uh, a, it, it, was, it was kind of a, a funny, funny parallel that part of the Animorphs' plan was also part of the special effects uh, plan. Um, in, in later shots of the Andalites where they, they kind of have the, the, the rest of the body uh, behind and they have the tail. We haven't seen the tail yet in in these, but the tails were pretty cool. They actually looked like jagged bone, not um, not uh, not like curved swords, curved metal swords at the end of uh, at the end of the tail. And I like I, I did like that, but I haven't seen that yet. Um, but I've seen it in previous viewings of the episodes. Uh, but for now, the Andalites are. Um, fuzzy sweaters and plastic masks with huge eyes. Um, Visser 3, when he talks, he's kind of like, it's as though he's breathing through the three slits that are that are down around the nose mouth area. And that's kind of neat. And also the stalk eyes move. Um, but the aliens, they again, they looked really cool the first time I saw them. I, I, it was neat to see them. But even then, I think I could tell this 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 is not uh, a Star Wars movie. Um, the Hork Bajir are also kind of a mixed bag because, on the one hand, the the, the uh, far away shots of the whole Hork Bajir body, it's pretty clearly um, a person, a human, in a in a I don't know a big plastic suit or something. But then they digitally added the serpentine head, and they have the arms just waving threateningly um, and I think again I think in later episodes it, it's it looks a little bit cooler but the two shots that I can recall from these first four um, mostly in the dark uh, it's it's just kind of there and it's certainly not the very dynamic um, uh, illustrations that we got in in Hork Bajir Chronicles and other later Animorphs books, but they also with those with the Hork Bajir they have the close up of the face, which is a, an, an interesting kind of rubber puppet that, that with a beak that, that threateningly wobbles toward the camera, um, and also one of them walks past Jake when he's hiding in that in that uh, um, in the tube before he morphs into his dog. Homer, and that was kind of a, it, it reminded me of when you see uh, like a viral video of a dinosaur chasing somebody at a mall, um, the, it, wearing one of those sort of dinosaur costumes that you'd see in Walking with Dinosaurs. It was kind of that, um, that kind of effect, and it, it worked. Um, and that's what they had to do, I guess, um, to make these things look threatening and at all cool. They couldn't do, give you the whole thing. Uh, and the, the, the first time we see the whole shape of an Andalite, it's in shadow as Alfangor is being devoured by Visser III. Um, probably completely digitally drawn, but in shadow so they don't have to go into any detail. Uh, so that's um, the aliens. When we see the Yurks in their Yurk bodies, they are gray slugs. It's not hard to do that. Um, Slugs are among the actual animals that are used in uh, the Animorphs uh, uh, TV show. And I'll talk about the animals. I'll talk about them right now because that's a transition. Um, 
I've said in previous videos about my thoughts on what an Animorphs movie or Netflix TV show is how I put it, but movie is what we're looking forward to now, uh, that it will be really cool. You can do, they can do photorealistic animals. They can do um, motion capture where appropriate with the whole body, but motion capture with the face. So you have, you can have a, a tiger um, doing with kind, with uh, whatever the actor who plays Jake's uh, facial expressions when he's saying lines. Uh, you wouldn't have the tiger's mouth move because it's thought speak, but you could have, like, if his eyes go like this, you could have the tiger's eyes do what the actor does. And um, and that will, hopefully that's what they do. I hope that's what they do anyway. Um, but it will it'll be really cool. Not, not what happens in uh, the uh, TV show. They have live animals, uh, and probably just about everyone who these live animals attack is one of their trainers. I think that's that's often how it works, or, or a stunt person, but probably one of the trainers, because the trainers know how to fall when uh, a lion or a tiger uh, comes after them. And um, they probably don't train... I'm guessing the hawk was trained. Um, it's hard to train a cat uh, or a rat um, or, or lizards. I guess it's probably hardest to train the lizards. The cat and the rat probably trained to an extent. Um, but uh, it's cool to see real animals, and when they when they have the thought speak uh, coming out of them, it kind of reminds me of that the, the Homeward Bound uh, movie where it's real animals and filmed, trained to go certain places, but um, the mouths don't move when they speak. They 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 bark. The mouths move when they bark or meow. When they when they're speaking, when I think it's Michael J. Fox is speaking as the the younger dog, um, the dog's mouth isn't moving, but Michael J. Fox's voice is clearly coming from the dog. Uh, at least that is how the the uh, how it looks in the movie. It's a really great movie if you haven't seen it. And I miss the whole um, it's a real dog trained, uh, and then an actor's voice that we are just assuming is coming out of the dog instead of. Uh, either a, a mix of a real dog and um, animated mouth, uh, although that does happen to great effect in the men in, the first Men in Black movie, uh, or just a completely photorealistic, or as close as they could get, photorealistic animal with the mouth moving uh, when the when it's speaking English. Um, so it's neat to see that there are a couple of particularly good acting moments for some of the animals. Uh, I can only remember one at this time, but in the, in the I think it's the second episode, and the, uh, Rachel morphs into the cat, and tries to make and and Cassie's trying to make the cat look like a stray, and people and and then the others join in, and the cat meows just as Brooke Nevin, who plays Rachel, says her line, "Guys, stop it!" or something like that. And so it was a great mix of it was just a great take, uh, probably a lot of fun, and they were just like, "Okay, the cat meowed, we're going to use that, we're going to have." Uh, her say her line over the cat meowing and that's that's that I'm trying to remember what the other uh, Great acting moment from an animal was it was in let's see if I wrote it down. I took notes. I Think it was in the one of the latter uh, Episodes um, Oh in uh, in the fourth in the fourth episode on the run um, There's a great uh, Jake has morphed into a lizard, and he's in an iguana tank in a pet store, um, and I, I forget what he's saying at the time, but they're looking around, they're trying to figure something out, and the the lizard just goes, it doesn't raise its eyebrow because it doesn't have an eyebrow, but it kind of looks to the side, as lizards will do, and it's I swear its eye opens just a little bit, it's got such a great skeptical look, and it goes perfectly with the mood of the scene. Um, uh, the fly that Cassie turns into does not uh, do as good with the acting. Um, one, uh, one story about filming with animals that I remember from way back when these things first aired uh, was uh, Sean Ashmore talking about, he played Jake, and talking about meeting the white tiger that he morphs into. And uh, before I recount it, I, I want to just uh, say it turns out Unlike I have believed for 20 years since this uh, TV show aired, white tigers are not their own species of tiger. They are, uh, they are kind of a, 
a subgroup of orange Bengal tigers. Um, it's a recessive gene, but two orange tigers could mate and produce a white tiger, uh, or a white tiger could, could mate with another white tiger and produce an orange tiger. I don't know if that necessarily would work, but the two orange tigers, it could if they have the recessive gene. Um, so that's interesting. I learned that at, uh, at a big cat preserve in Indiana. And it, it shocked me at the time because for years I thought white Bengal tiger, like there's a white tiger zord in Power Rangers, white tiger is a thing in Power Rangers. It's just they're considered cool and exotic because they're rare, but they're rare not because the species has been uh, hunted, they've been hunted too much, but the species of white tiger has not been hunted to extinction. It's just that they rarely happen uh, in, uh, I think it's one in 10,000 in the wild anyway. Um, but so that's, but the story that he would tell would be when he reached out to uh, acquire the tiger's DNA, the tiger suddenly moved its head and his fingers went up the tiger's nose. And the tiger is a huge, huge animal. He's like, I think he was 18 at the time. Um, they were playing 12, 13 year olds, but they were 18 to 21. Um, the actors were, and he said that his fingers went up the tiger's nose and that it was a very scary thing. Um, and then there were people, handlers off, cam off camera or whatever, uh, saying, um, no, nothing sudden now, don't just, just stay calm. And he stayed calm and he lived, uh, obviously. Um, so that's just a, a great, um, there's actually a video of him recounting more stories about Animorphs uh, somewhere on the internet. Just look up Sean Ashmore talks about Animorphs. Um, so let's see, that's the, that's the animals. I, I wrote things down so that I would, um, I wrote down puppets are nicely freaky. They're nicely freaky. They're not the beautiful illustrations that we get in, in the book covers, but they're, they're freaky. They're scary for children. Maybe not for adults, but for children, they're scary. Um, let's see. I noticed that perhaps again, because they can't do a lot with special effects and the cool stuff, they really play up the paranoia aspect of they could be anywhere. The Yerks could be anywhere. We need to be quiet. That was just something that I noted um, that might be like, uh, well, we can't do this, so let's do more of this to, uh, to add to the drama. Like, we're not going to have the big exciting fights, but let's raise the stakes in this way. Um, I also wanted to mention the theme song, which um, it's, it's a, I always thought that it was just a convenient uh, alt rock or indie rock or whatever song that uh, conveyed what they wanted to convey and so they made it the theme song. It seems like it was written um, by, uh, let's see where's the, the, the names, Craig Hazen, Julie Dansky, and David Wolfert specifically for, uh, to be the theme song for Animorphs. And it's, uh, it's, it's just a pretty, really good song. It's catchy, it's, uh, it's a little edgy, and the, the, the music kind of goes with, it goes very well, and this is probably deliberate if it was written for the show, it goes very well with the kind of atmospheric, um, not very melodic score of the show, um, which, you know, just listen to the score of the show a little bit. It sounds, it sounds kind of like uh, some of the score of the video, the Nintendo 64 video game of GoldenEye. Um, but yeah, I wanted to mention the theme song because it's really good. Uh, let's see what else. So I talked about the animals, I talked about the puppets, I talked about the theme song and the paranoia. Um, a few casting things that I'll get into in other videos. Um, oh, the disc. Um, now the reason that the four first four episodes, uh, it takes the four episodes to uh, give you essentially the first book, is because really only the first episode and the fourth episode, no, first episode and the third episode uh, are the first book. Um, the, the, uh, the first two episodes are My Name is Jake, Parts 1 and 2. The third episode is Underground, which is of course not the title of the third book or any of the earlier books. It is the title of the 17th book, the one about oatmeal. Um, but it's about them turning into lizards. 
ending up as lizards in lockers and finding out where about the yerk pool under under the school, um, and that is the, uh, the the latter part of the invasion. Um, the second and fourth episodes are about that disc, and I I think I remember, uh, but I won't say because it hasn't really come up uh, yet. I think I remember exactly what the disc is about and what it's for and how it works. I don't remember its exact arc because the disc is completely made up by the writers. Um, and, uh, serves a purpose that I think, uh, the Elemist, it's, would have served, it's, uh, more on the disc as it develops, but in these episodes, in episode two, they've got to go back to the construction site and find the disc. In episode four, it turns out they dropped the disc in episode three when they were in the Yurk Pool, now the Yurks have it, and the Yurks are trying to use it to get at the Andalites, uh, people that they consider to be Andalites, the Animorphs, and, um, yeah, it's, it, I, I looked up the word MacGuffin, which I often hear in, uh, discussion of movies and things online, uh, a, a MacGuffin is, uh, an object that doesn't necessarily pertain to the plot, but it gets, sets the plot in motion. I think that's a rough, a rough definition of MacGuffin, and I think that's, kind of what the disc is for the most part. Again, it gives them something to do, something to chase that doesn't require, that's cheap, that doesn't require a lot of special effects. Um, although it does uh, get us a, a fun bait and switch with Marco and Jake in the mall turning into rats and lizards and things while uh, Cassie and Rachel do some expositional, uh, expositional uh, work by attending a meeting of the sharing. Um, I don't think any of this happens in any of the books because the disc is not in the books. Um, I was gonna I was gonna talk about the performances of the main actors, but I don't think I'll do that yet. I'll give them a few more episodes uh, to, you know, get more of a sense. Um, I like them, but I had thoughts on the first four episodes, and I will have more thoughts at a later time. Um, I wrote down: Was Rachel a lion because a bear was not available? Um, first of all, it was filmed in Canada, so there were bears, um, not necessarily trained bears, but just the, the, um, the fact that Rachel morphs into a lion, that's, that's her battle morph in, instead of a bear, um, and her, her initial battle, like, she doesn't acquire the bear until, uh, the seventh book, The Stranger, in one of her first independent moves, just, I'm gonna fly away from my house in the middle of the night, land on a bear, uh, demorph, acquire the bear, and go back. I'm just going to get the bear. In the first several, she's an elephant. That's her battle morph. Um, but she doesn't turn into an elephant. I guess I know why they wouldn't use an elephant on the sets for battle purposes. But a bear, I mean, if they're going to go straight to the, the fuzzy battle morph, they went with a lion instead of a bear, was it because it was easier to get a lion if they were using real lions? Or was it because... Um, Bears are easy are easy enough to train, I guess. I don't know if bears or lions are easier, but I know that uh, like there's a there's a, like a source of trained bears that that Hollywood goes to. Um, I think they're headquartered in Alaska. I forget their name, but I do, I know that there are trained bears. Um, or or it's because they want to have a lion because lions look cool. They couldn't give the lion to Jake because Jake's already a tiger, uh, even though they make him the leader. So he could be king, could be the lion. I don't know. I don't know. It's just something that occurred to me. Um, I find it interesting, you know, they can't, obviously nobody knows what it's actually like to be an animal, look through their eyes, but, uh, one of the things that I loved about the book, reading the books was finding out, you know, the well-researched, this is probably what it's like to be this animal. On TV, they don't have the, they have, they have a little bit of, like, Marco turns into a rat and starts, uh, thought speaking, run, 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 run to represent what in the book it would have said, this this mouse brain was very uh, skittish and scared and terrified and wanted to uh, escape fast. Um, and they do a little bit of that through like their thought speak, uh, which they have to do. But also, but they also, um, there's, a little, there's a little bit of sound effects and they do a, they do a camera filter like the, the lizards. I don't know that lizards see in green because they're green, but when they're lizards and they're doing the, the filter, it's a green filter on the camera. Um, so I like that's that's fun. Again, they're doing what they can. 
because they can't make these as they want to. They don't have the budget and probably the technology isn't there yet. Uh, I looked up whether or not lizards bite as a result of this and it turns out they do. So do slugs and snails. Well, snails, not necessarily slugs. Um, oh, the, about the disc. And I think this will be the last thing I say because I think it's the last thing that I wrote down. The disc is... You remember those... Um, what was it called? Well, at least uh, what I found, illusion spinners, like these very flat discs with reflective tops or, or a swirl top or something that kind of, you, you put it flat and then you spin it. Not a fidget spinner, but like a little disc that you spin it and it's got a, a little bump in the middle of the bottom just enough that it will spin and it does a neat, uh, uh, they're, they're called illusion illusion spinners uh, and that's what the disc always looked like to me it looked like uh, this this flat toy that I that I used to have that probably there are still some in my parents basement um, so that's that's the disc and that's the first four episodes of Animorphs um, so yeah I will try to do this regularly um, and uh, yeah it, it should be fun I'm looking forward to it. Uh, just, you know, the thoughts that come into your head when you watch the stuff that you watched 20 years ago. Um, they, they are interesting. Uh, at least I hope they're interesting because I'm putting them on video and sharing them on the internet. Uh, so if you have thoughts uh, about what I've said about the first four episodes or thoughts about uh, the first four episodes that did not figure into the video at all, please share them in the comments below. Um, and uh, if you like if you like this sort of thing, then say like, and if you look forward to more of it, then subscribe. Um, I guess I have to say those sorts of things. I'm also going to try to do the, the reading from literature, from out of copyright literature, uh, more regularly also. Uh, so, thank you, and um, ram the blade ship.